Hey guys, welcome to the Aviation Podcast. And on this episode, we've got Parth here, who has done his pilot training in the United States, uh, who has done three summits uh, of mountaineering experience, and you know, who has been through the ups and downs of the aviation industry. Please, Parth, introduce yourself and why you chose aviation, and what influenced you to become a pilot in the first place. Hi, Zaneb. Aviation happened to me actually from. very early on in my life i have always wanted to become a pilot and i knew this uh, straight from the 5th grade i believe you know most kids are fall uh, into the enthusiasm because planes are anyway very fascinating right but it uh, i knew that it was uh, very strongly growing uh, into me and for me and i was sure uh, even until the 10th grade that i wanted to become a pilot and for that reason i had to fight with my parents to you know convince them to put me uh, in the science in the science field for my 11th and 12th unfortunately that didn't work out for me this this was back in 2009 when kingfisher uh, went out of business the industry was in a major turmoil i was actually uh, made to consult uh, with a lot of pilots who also happened to discourage me out of it they suggested that i continue doing uh, the things i am doing out of aviation and eventually pursue a private pilot's license but uh, obviously that wasn't the best decision i i still believe that i should have continued pursuing my commercial pilot's license and not you know having having gone for a bachelor's degree for that matter so yeah i i was i was confident that uh, piloting was going to be my passion and uh, i i think i stand by that decision to date okay and uh, like you said how difficult was it uh, for you to convince your parents to become a pilot because i feel it's very difficult to convince brown parents in this age and time right so there are many many reasons why you know parents today disagree uh, upon this field it's a very lucrative uh, uh, field it demands a lot of money and unfortunately in the country that we uh, reside not uh, a lot of people are blessed with you know a comfortable finance situation so aviation is a very expensive uh, career option you know to start with but uh, apart from that uh, i'm sure people know that pilots do not have an easy life it is it comes with a lot of risks and uh, definitely most people understand that it it wouldn't always be uh, easy on a person when they know that there is a good chance that you know they may not come back it's it's only in the mentality of people who do not understand what this field is but uh, for us for us who you know gone through the entire experience of training to become a pilot we know that there is immense amount of safety and a, and a lot of potential in this field we know that there is a reason for everything that we do and uh, we know that we are not only simply putting our, li- our lives at risk and the passengers that we you know intend to carry there is a lot of you know effort that goes into becoming a profession professional fancy as a few if you would call it as a pilot uh, is i had to convince my parents uh, through the fact that i was moving from a finance uh, slash you know business course into the career that i've always wanted finance was not a big problem for them but uh, they wanted to be sure about you know the industry paying me back the way uh, it expects you to invest in it there have there have been a lot of ups and downs in this uh, industry through uh, time and uh, they know that you know the depression hits real bad and there are pilots there are a lot of pilots who have to wait uh, you know once their cpl or training is done wait for vacancies to come out and sometimes it could really be a drag and uh, many actually choose to switch careers once they've done it so all all things put together it's not always an easy decision for pilot uh, for parents to put their kids into the field so yeah i uh, they knew that i was extremely passionate about it they they knew all my gains were flight simulation i've been you know putting myself into thorough research about this it was not that the water was absolutely new for me what i was getting into was a very calculated uh, step so i think that is what uh, allowed them to put me through this
I guess, you know, a lot of us have been very lucky and privileged to have such parents. A lot of people in India, is, especially, do not have that privilege of being so financially stable. Uh, having so such supportive parents to help us, you know, go through the career and choose the part we want. All right, Parth. So after you've gotten your parents convinced and after you have made a decision of becoming a pilot, what was the next step for you? Did you choose on to the bachelor's degree you wanted to get done? Or uh, you went straight forward towards pilot training in the United States? No, so I actually got my bachelor's degree. I graduated uh, out of my degree much earlier uh, in time. And eventually when things started to improve in the country, I made the decision. Do You know, I had I'd done uh, everything on my part. My uh, parents wanted me to, you know, secure myself uh, with a degree to the very least. And uh, I did that. Things had also started improving. So it was also becoming a promising career uh, choice. So I decided that this is what I'm going to go ahead with. Immediately after, you know, things started to improve, I uh, went out and cleared my medicals, uh, got my computer number, as uh, is the first step uh, to becoming a pilot in India. Started uh, my thorough research of looking at flight schools across the globe. I realized that there weren't uh, too many great options in our country. And also, you know, uh, having to hear uh, experiences from people, my my superiors, seniors, you know, who I could actually take advice from. I decided that the United States would be the place uh, for me to go. And I started working on the process, actually, the visa, uh, you know, the uh, application to the university, the, to the flight school. All of that happened uh, for me very quickly. Uh, and I was also on the top of my game with, uh, you know, getting things done, uh, you know, with all the research, with uh, clearing my medical, uh, getting my computer number, getting all the documentation uh, with the DGCA. It's not an easy process. Like, you know, they really expect you to be on your foot with your game. Uh, and I did, uh, you know, meet with their expectations. So that is how it went ahead. Okay, and how long did the whole process took for you from the start, from the moment you've gotten your medical done and then uh, once you have, you know, pinpointed the flight school you want? Before we jump on towards this question, uh, how did you start researching the flight school? You know, how did you pinpoint the flight school you want in the United States? Did you uh, contact the flight schools uh, in the United States? Did you contact your mentors, like you said earlier? Uh, what was the process for you? It was actually very simple. I did my own research first, and this is exactly what I suggest, uh, you know, to most people. When, before you, you're speaking to anybody, you must have done your own research. Don't go to anybody with absolutely no information, uh, because that puts a lot of uh, load on somebody else, you know, to, uh, you know, like put you to take you through the entire uh, process. So I did everything uh, that I could have done in my power to understand uh, what needs to be done. And then I I had my own list of schools listed down and all these schools that I'd spoken to who I could potentially go to uh, for my flight training. You know, the schools that have uh, a good fleet strength, you know, who have a good number of instructors. I did all my research. I knew that, you know, these places would be uh, ideal in terms of the weather as well. I did my, I did my own bit of research and then, uh, of course, had my mentors to guide me further ahead. I happened to know a couple of uh, pilots in the airline industry who I was very fortunate to take, uh, you know, to have the right guidance from. Uh, pinpointed on, uh, you know, Miami uh, as, uh, as the city to be, particularly Dean International, which was my first flight school. Of course, one of the most reputed uh, flight schools uh, in India. Known in India, uh, based in Miami. To answer your question, it took me about a month in totality to actually get to starting with the application process with Dean and finally getting a visa. So it was, luck, fortunately for me, very quick a process, you know. I see, you know, honestly, it comes down to the research you do and then, you know, the, the research we do it ourselves, that matters the most. The flight instructor, I had a podcast with few a few weeks earlier, actually told me the exact same thing is because the research we do and the, the flight school we select is what matters, to be honest. The training you do, what uh, takes you ahead with your life, you know, ahead with this career, especially because... Uh, the training matters most. Now, Path, you've gotten your process done. You've gotten all your visa done. What was the first experience you had when you landed in the United States? Been all through all of these years, you've been thinking of becoming a pilot, and then uh, you've already landed the place you wanted. 
to be in what was the first experience you had i've always been uh, a very enthusiastic person so there was uh, there was absolutely nothing that i was you know afraid of then i would like to say i was extremely excited and just the fact that i was in a city as beautiful as miami and it proved me uh, correct uh, it was absolutely stunning just from the first day i uh, you know stepped in uh, i was blown and i was more than excited to you know have to have finally gotten to the place where i want to be uh, a place as beautiful and uh, you know explicitly spoken about across the world as miami i was very happy i was i was extremely excited about this no complaints whatsoever okay can you, can you share a bit of experience what the first flight of yours had to be you know how, how it went and what went through and what was the process like my first flight right um, i had absolutely no idea so there's something called the tsa clearance that you need in the us to uh, actually begin your flights uh, flight training i got my clearance and very luckily the same day same evening my instructor uh, an instructor just randomly decided to take me on my joy ride it was a sunset uh, flight we we were uh, off within within the very hour that i got my clearance i was absolutely blown you know because it was the first time that i was sitting at controls of an aircraft it's it's one thing to be sitting in the aircraft as a passenger but you know at controls and you know having to see everything that your instructor is doing it was gibberish for me no doubt i mean it was very new you know operating radios the way he was doing it and uh, you know all the technical bits you know to get the aircraft started to begin taxiing you know heading on to the runway but i can tell you uh, he was a very kind man uh, nabil zaidi is his was his name uh, he gave me the flight controls as soon as we hopped onto the runway he put uh, he put the thrust for me and he told me you know as and when we reach this particular airspeed start pulling on the yoke you know we are going to lift off i shit you not i was in tears when uh, we took off and i actually had to transfer the controls back to him because i couldn't take this as overwhelming the experience was it was by far the best thing uh, you know i'd felt in my life as a as a pilot in particular it is it's it's uh, it's definitely understated right now I, i i cannot stress enough on how beautiful that experience was extremely wholesome and uh, talking about the rest of the flight we took off in the east and uh, uh, you know found ourselves straight over the uh, miami beach climbed a bit and my instructor gave me the flight controls again and he asked me to do whatever i wanted with the aircraft he asked me to roll the aircraft he asked me to yaw the aircraft and you know basically get a feel of the aircraft and i think this is something that is very important for instructors to do because only when you start to build your confidence from the very first flight you know will you will you grow in terms of confidence in terms of your skills in terms of really establishing that love with the aircraft so i was very lucky to have him as my first instructor you know he really set the bar extremely high for an instructor to have that kind of trust in their student and then he uh, pulled off some crazy maneuvers he uh, you know he put the aircraft on some zero g's and uh, that was fun that was a fun experience and you know uh, he he knew that i was extremely thrilled and it wasn't scaring me you know the experience uh, uh, of him putting me through the maneuvers he was confident that i was definitely going to grow uh, up in this career very quickly he knew that there was something in me that was keeping me stuck to doing what i'm doing so hands down the best experience out there i see so how long did the whole people and cpl all together took for you uh, in the international academy all the ratings did happen in the same flight school itself or you had to change it in between i finished my instrument rating uh, at team and unfortunately the school had to shut down i was left with my commercial pilot check ride i was done with most of my flight training uh, commercial flight training as well on the multi engine on the seneca 
but uh, on for uh, unfortunate reasons the school had to shut down and we found ourselves uh, you know stuck for a big amount of time our visa and uh, our uh, i20 uh, which is the permit that you know allows you to uh, be in the united states to train as a student as a flight student uh, mentioned that it was dean international dean and that dean international was a school where we were training and uh, obviously that wasn't the case anymore so we had to you know get a new i20 installed with a flight a fresh flight tool that we finally found ourselves uh, we 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 switched to a flight school at the same airport uh, just on the other side of the airport uh, called flying academy they were uh, kind enough to take us in uh, a bunch of us actually my entire batch uh, you know got split a uh, few went to different cities few found you know other flight schools in miami itself we stuck to the airport we were training at and it was actually a, a very lengthy process you know dealing with the tsa dealing with uh, homeland securities finding the flight school that was affordable and also uh, you know that could cater to our needs in terms of the aircraft type the aircraft uh, fleet strength uh, a lot of that so my training in totality uh, took me about 18 uh, to 19 odd months a lot of time was wasted uh, for sure uh but then uh it it happened eventually so i did my i uh, instrument rating up and until uh, my instrument rating i did at dean and then flying academy is where i finally got my commercial pilot license i see and how long the whole uh, instrument rating and multi engine took uh, for you and a lot of people have told me that instrument rating is one of the hardest rating uh to be there in the whole uh professional pilot program is it the same for you as well was it the instrument rating to be the hardest one or uh, was it just you know the rest of the ratings i think it's it, it's it's a very subjective uh, question it defend it uh, differs from people to people in uh in my case i had been doing a lot of uh, flight sim training from early on uh, through my school days through my college days so i knew what each instrument does so keeping that aside uh, my instructor was also you know very 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 skilled uh, you know he was a great instructor in terms of uh, you know giving the student uh, the kind of quality training that is required so i thoroughly enjoyed my ir training with him i was anyways extremely uh, passionate and an enthusiastic learner so uh, i wouldn't say it was very difficult but i can see why people think that way it is challenging because you are not flying visually you are always wearing goggles when you're training you know for ir and uh, it can get really tricky if you're not very adept with the instruments and if you are not if you cannot you know really feel the aircraft the way you're supposed to you can you can you can make some serious blunders and it is also true that a lot of uh, check ride failures happen through instrument rating on instrument rating in addition it is also a very important skill to master in the airlines uh, you know once you are once you're an airline pilot you cannot expect to always have a uh, great weather around you and also uh, the kind of flying that happens in the airlines you need to be extremely skilled with the instruments i think i can see why it is very complicated but uh, again if you sh- if you show the right enthusiasm if you're dedicated enough i i think it should be a sail through like you earlier said that uh, you know you've you've got in a lot of experience with flight simulation all the stuff a lot of people have a very variable idea about it uh, they say that uh, these flight simulations actually harm you uh, not harm you in the sense they they spoil the skill you needed to be a pilot you know they you know it differs uh, obviously it differs from what you fly normally uh, do you prefer these aspiring pilots to actually gain experience doing flight simulation before they get in, get on to the pilot training what do you think about it and do you, do you prefer pilots to actually uh, start on with the flight simulation before they get on to the pilot training 1000% uh i think it is extremely beneficial and i i can tell you from personal experience i so uh, you know not not many students actually enter into the aircraft for the first time knowing things uh, that exist so personally for me i even uh, had a very uh, quick 
uh, grip on the yoke with uh, you know just landing the aircraft taking off the aircraft uh, I, I i found myself you know much smoother with the controls and uh, i can tell you that because i uh, my instructor was very surprised to see how i was how quickly i was picking the skill up and i was uh, fortunately uh, one of the uh, earliest one of the quickest uh, students in my batch to get uh, released for a solo that again doesn't come very easily it your instructor needs to establish that confidence uh, in you i think uh, i will give a lot of credit to the flight simulation training that i did you know personally i spent a lot of time watching uh, shows like air crash investigation you know understanding things around uh, aviation understanding the dynamics of being a pilot being in the cockpit you know taking the stress that they do uh, every day and how they tackle uh, situations as as and when they come so uh, flight simulation i think is a must i think uh, if if uh, i had to say i would i would really uh, expect students to have come in with a certain number of hours of flight training uh, you know flight sim experience before actually getting onto the cockpit because one it saves you uh, a lot of money you can learn quicker you can uh, get you know get hold of and get get a good feel of the aircraft quicker so you save up on a lot of money and obviously uh, you don't want to get into the aircraft absolutely dumbfounded and uh, you know thus keep making mistakes again it this comes with passion uh, you cannot just want to be a pilot because it's a glamorous profession you have to actually love the idea of flying so yes to finally answer your question yes i think everyone should uh, go through sim training actually very well said you know a lot of people they look into the lifestyle of pilots they see you know the uniform and you know the how glamorous it is but in all it is totally definitely not at all uh, they fly red uh, sighted you know the amount of ups and downs the industry goes through how dependent the industry is upon the country's economy and all that stuff uh, they should actually look into it and before getting onto this career and you know getting onto this industry before you know the one thing i wanted to add on is the cockpit is one of the worst classrooms ever you know the if you're familiar with all the instruments there you if you're familiar with how the teaching's going on it's so much easier for you to get uh, yourself accustomed to the training itself uh, but if you're into the cockpit the first time and if you're willing to learn there <laughs> i feel it's one of the worst classrooms ever to be in to be honest now coming on to the topic of flight instructor what was the next process for you once you have done your pilot training i mean like you have done your ppl cpl instrument rating and multi engine if i'm right yes and then what was the next process for you uh, did you choose on to becoming a cfi and a lot of a lot of students do that you know uh, they get employed by the flight school itself they get their flight instructor rating there itself and then they finish off all their uh, hours till 1500 and then they choose to apply for airlines at that time uh, what was the next process for you what was the next strategy and the step for you uh, did you choose the path towards becoming a cfi or what was the next process for you so uh, i was very sure that i want to come back to india and uh, finally start working as a commercial pilot so uh, working as a cfi was uh, never really uh, in my head so i i did exactly as planned i came back to india and uh, started working on the process of converting my license uh, the uh, faa license to the indian equivalent oh, all right so what was the whole process took for you like uh, once you once you've come back to india and then the whole conversion process how long the whole process took for you i was actually very uh, unlucky with the entire process because uh, so so the conversion flights that you have to do right you you have a lot of flight checks uh, that you have to do there's day check night check ir check there's landings that you have to do there's 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 several things there's a cross country check so all these things that you have to do with an ex- indian examiner it firstly takes up a lot of your time because flying in india is very different you know here to complete let's say even 20 hours would take 10x the time as uh, you know you as a student would in miami uh, and particularly the united states or a country outside of uh, ours i had to wait 
for several days, you know, at stretch, just in between my flights and absolutely do nothing. So okay. that is a challenge. That is a challenge here. And, you know, uh, the thing is in India here, we do not have too many planes. We do not have the kind of infrastructure that flight, uh, as you would expect, uh, for a flight student to flight school to have. So, uh, it was a major challenge for me because I was very, very much spoiled with luxury of having to fly whenever I wanted in the States and, you know, ha- always having an instructor, uh, ready to fly. So that was, uh, that was definitely a disadvantage here. Keeping that aside, I got unlucky with, uh, my documents, uh, at the time of, you know, actually submitting, uh, them to the DGCA and they, they will not spare you when it comes to you know having the documents right the conversion process for me particularly took an entire year which is uh, an extremely long uh, process you know ideally you would want to finish your conversion flights as soon as you're back and then put your papers out because there's something called the six months recency that you have like you have to you know submit your documents to the dgca for conversion okay. uh, within six months from the last date of your flight and uh, for the hours to be valid. So unluckily for me, I had to do my conversion uh, flights, the check flights twice. So it was a huge uh, toll in terms of finance on me. And uh, obviously my application was rejected once. And because of that, I had to submit a fresh application and you know do the entire conversion process again. So I was very unlucky on that side. But uh, if you have everything right, I think, this is possible and uh, you know it is it is very much possible to have your license converted and couriered to you within the span of 6 6 months yes i see you know honestly uh, in india general aviation is you know it doesn't exist at all i have a friend who who has done his masters in uh, united kingdom and then who has done his ppl as well what he does is he never he never flies in india honestly he never he has never converted his license as well all he does is once a year he goes back to the united kingdom he does flies there uh, to maintain his uh, license and comes back uh, when i asked him why he does all of this he's like you know honestly flying in india is one of the worst things ever and then general aviation doesn't exist at all it's never flexible uh, you never find instructors available you never find the planes available uh, so, uh, you know, waiting all of that time, might as well just go back and finish it off. Uh, I feel India should establish such infrastructure we have in the rest of the countries that makes it available for us to fly planes. What was the next strategy for you, Path? Like you've done your entire pilot training, you've gotten all your ratings done, you've gotten all the conversion done. What was the next strategy for you? How was the aviation industry looking when you've uh, completed your conversion? I mean, we can establish now that I've been very unlucky through this, uh, through my training phase and, you know, through the conversion, because unfortunately, by the time I got my license, uh, Jet Airways also went out of business and uh, it it put a major dent in the airline industry. A lot of pilots were unemployed. I know personally a lot of pilots who, you know, were struggling severely. When something like this happens, uh, there is a big depression uh you know an airline as established as jet airways you know which was uh, employing so many aviation professionals uh when when there is a surplus of uh you know these profession professionals amateurs and you know newbies like us uh, suffer also because there is now a big pool of pilots who are experienced in the airline industry who have a lot of jet engine hours who can be inducted by the other airlines. So they take, they tend to take our spot. It was a very unfortunate situation. So I, in, if you ask me what my strategy was, I was only praying. I had my fingers crossed and I was just hoping that things would improve eventually. And uh, very unfortunately to, you know, not only to my disadvantage, to the disadvantage of the entire world, COVID happened and uh, the airline industry took an entire dip down to zero. I still don't think I have a strategy that could work. I have shot emails across ca- corporate carriers through airlines to all possible means, like, you know, to people uh, I, I could know who could potentially help me to even air ambulances for that matter. I've tried every bit of, of my efforts that I could put in and uh, 
it still hasn't worked out but i'm still hopeful you know things could things things will improve i see so uh, during all of this time uh, did you ever thought of going back to the united states you know get get your flight instructor rating uh, from the flight school you had done your pilot training before you were dead set on uh, staying back in india itself i did actually uh, very strongly consider going back to the states and uh, even canada for that matter but unfortunately the situation with united states is that you have uh, it, firstly it is very difficult uh, for indians now to get uh, you know get through their visa uh, as pilots but in particular secondly uh, you cannot uh, really uh, you have to take a conjoint degree uh, along with you know your uh, flight instructor training which adds heavily on to the cost you know to be able to allow be allowed to work and uh, get paid as a flight instructor so firstly the cost that you know you incur to become a flight instructor student there is a lot because you pay for your degree as well it's not easy to pay for your expenses when you cannot earn on the side uh, and you know all expenses have to be taken care of by yourself you cannot you're not allowed to earn uh, over there uh, unless you know you you either have a green card or you have a work permit All right, but now one of the I'll be honest with you. One of the reasons why I actually got you on board of this podcast is because of your Instagram feed. Like it's honestly so amazing, and you know I'll I'll be linking down your Instagram below for any of the viewers out there. Uh, considering you've done all of these uh, bigger summits for the viewers out there, Bad has he has an extensive mountaineering experience. He's been through the course there, and he's on to his uh, experience of becoming uh, of, of climbing Mount Everest as well in 2023, if I'm right. That's right. Can you share the experience of you choosing this uh, path uh, as a pilot and as a mountaineer as well? How? What was this perspective, and then why did you choose on to going towards this? Uh, I've always been fond of trekking. Uh, you know, being out uh, in the nature, and it's it's it's. I think it's one of the most wholesome and fulfilling uh, physical activities you can do out there. Being out in the trail doesn't only uh, provide you with peace that you need. but uh it is it is a lot about the self insight that you get you you get to spend a lot of time with yourself and uh it's 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 very reflective as a process altogether i love the mountains right uh, and uh, which is why i do the things that i do and uh which is also why i transitioned from being a trekker uh, to also being a mountaineer now I got I graduated out of the Himalayan Mountaineering Institute uh, in April this year and uh, I I'm very uh, very grateful you know to have to have my parents also approve of a sport as uh, dangerous as this so I did prove myself with uh, you know all the hard work that I put in to you know transitioning myself from being an extremely unfit person to a fit person you know being eligible uh, in the first place to do to, to be doing a mountaineering course so that happened and uh, climbing everest was uh, a very fancy uh, dream uh, you know a very uh, outlandish dream on my bucket list but then now that i've actually gotten my degree my course in place uh, i think it is it is definitely a dream that i can transition into reality it will definitely take a lot of effort in terms of finance it is a very exp- expensive expedition to you know just to start with so uh, that that and then also uh, you know keeping up with the physical fitness uh, is another thing uh, it also demands a lot of uh, expedition experience uh, that uh, you know one must have uh, you know before finally attempting a peak as you know famous as everest uh, is it's it's the highest point on earth it is definitely going to be a challenge uh, something that i'm willing to take take up in the meanwhile that uh, you know i have so much time uh, until i can actually see that i i get a job uh, i finally land myself into the cockpit that thing that i have for mountaineering i'm um, i try to make use of uh, the lockdown uh, the pandemic definitely you know i've seen uh, i've seen all through your instagram feed you know the the experience you had uh, the journey you had from you know from your weight loss journey itself you know the amount of dedication it takes 
uh, the perseverance it takes uh, for you to get to this point uh, and to explore the nature, you know, especially during the lockdown uh, is one of the best things I've ever seen uh, in my life. It takes a lot of effort, to be honest, and, you know, to not get anything out of it. Uh, so, Path, what is the next step for you? Like in the sense, what is the next summit you want to uh, get yourself accomplished to? I uh, intend to start climbing in and around the Siadris because I live in Mumbai. Uh, the Siadris are the closest, uh, you know, ranges and ranges for me to explore uh, and, you know, keep keep up with my practice on climbing. So I intend to start uh, with my climbing uh, training uh, in the Sayadris uh, around uh, from around October, you know, once the mon monsoon calms down, and eventually for 2022, I intend to climb uh, one of the most technical peaks in the world. Uh, it's a 6,812 meter peak called Amar Dablam, also one of the most beautiful mountains I've seen in Nepal in the Khumbu region. So uh, that is in the works for me. It's not as expensive an expedition as Everest is. So I can see this happening uh, for sure uh, for me in the next year. And I've been putting uh, all of my day's effort into, you know, training twice, uh, just starting from training twice a day to putting myself through a strict routine of nutrition and, uh, you know, lifestyle, uh, a very healthy lifestyle. So all things put together, I see myself uh, attempting and su hopefully successfully summiting Amat Ablam uh, for the year 2022. If I manage to do that, I think for 2023, Everest shouldn't be a very, uh, very far-fetched task. I will continue. I will have to continue to work work hard for it. It's a very humbling experience. It it definitely shows you your place because I know that there is so much that I have to work on and improve on. I think if Ahmad Ablam happens for me, I think I'm going to continue to work hard to make Everest happen for me in 2023. For sure, honestly, you know, uh, the the dedication with what you're doing right now, I'm I'm pretty certain you're going to do it eventually. Now, Pat, coming towards the end of this podcast, we'll have a few rapid fire questions for you, uh, if you're fine yeah. with that. To any aspiring pilots out there, uh, what is the first advice would you give uh, for them to choose this career uh, with a bachelor's degree or not, or how to... Uh, manage to get through this industry itself. Okay, I have actually I actually have a couple of things to say here, uh, and which I believe are the key takeaways from my experience as a pilot. Uh, please believe that. Uh, be rest assured that time in aviation is more important than money. If if it's costing you a fortune, uh, obviously do not uh, go entirely out of the way and put your put your family's uh, you know well being at stake, but be rest assured that time will respecting time in aviation will pay you back uh, volumes more than you know money will that's first second uh, please do not go behind the glamour uh, that you know uh, this aviation brings forward th this career brings forward it is definitely very glamorous it is one of the best uh, offices in the world i can assure you that you get to do uh, you know you get to make your money out of absolutely sitting uh, you know in an office that you love uh, to be you get to travel the world for free uh, but it comes with its own uh, you know uh, cons you have to put you have to uh, sacrifice on a lot of your family time you have to be on the top of your game you know with terms of your fitness in terms of not injuring yourself in terms of uh, you know being uh, constantly uh, a progressive learner you have to be very passionate about flying as a course. I can today say that I want, uh, I would be willing to fly for a year or even two without making a penny because I would still be doing the things that I do, uh, things that I love to be doing. So you have to be very passionate about it. Please do not go step into this uh, career if you're only in it for the glamour because there, there's going to be a lot of disappointments there's going to be a lot of failures and only a passionate uh, uh, aspirant can pull through. Which is one of the best air crash investigation episodes you have seen uh, till now? If you can remember. Man, there's actually too many. Uh, the Tenerife uh, disaster uh, that happened between the two Boeing 747s 
was one that really stayed back with me uh, it was uh, very painful to watch uh, as cliche as it sounds uh, chesley sullenberger's uh, uh, you know forced river landing on the hudson is something that i take very closely to my heart because okay. it takes one to you know be as calm uh, a pilot as he was uh there is actually too many that are flashing through my head but yeah if you if you were to ask me in a rapid fire these two would be the one that comes straight into my head <laughs> all right uh one last question uh which is the most ugliest plane you have ever seen ugliest aircraft you have ever seen that's a very incorrect question i'm very sorry to say <laughs> I, I, i have i have too much love for planes i could there I has could to be one if i had the option ugliest I think the caravan uh, looks the the Cessna caravan looks a little much like a bus. It's not. Uh, it doesn't look very aerodynamic, like you uh-huh. know, very beautiful. But uh-huh. it's still, uh, you know, it's still a, a sea plane and a land plane. Uh, it's it's a beautiful aircraft. Uh, but if you were to ask me uh, of all the planes that didn't look as great, I think I would go with the Cessna caravan. Okay, uh, never had that answer ever before. uh all right so one last question uh which is one of the best airlines ever uh, you have ever traveled into or uh, which airline would you actually choose to work in my dream airline and also uh, the airline i've had the best uh, flying experience with was emirates and i don't think uh, there's an easier answer the airline uh, respects uh, the pilots for you know for who they are and they are very handsomely paid and it's not only about the pay once i think you uh, enter into an airline as global as emirates you have the en- you have access to the entire world you very can true. travel the entire world for free and i think uh, that is something very beautiful about the airline it definitely uh, puts a lot of fatigue and stress into the lives of the pilots because most of the flights are cross borders and oceanic routes so there is a lot of fatigue that comes along but i think uh, if i were asked for my dream airline uh, it would definitely be emirates for sure for sure uh, thank you so much for coming over to the podcast parth and i've taken a considerable amount of time from you and i wish you very all the best and towards your future endeavors and your future career thank you zuned and likewise to you i, I uh, thank you for having me or thank you for 